Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. After more than 250 episodes, we're still going. We're going to a special place today. We want to invite the listeners maybe to feel relaxed, to feel Ooh. good. And Naomi, she's the perfect person to tell us <laughs> because she just came back from the house of Aia. Welcome, first of all, and yeah. introduce yourself. And then we go into that wellness hotel. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that I'm, I get to talk more about it because it's taking me back. But thanks for having me, Suzanne. I absolutely, it's a pleasure. I'm Naomi. I usually I describe myself as, I was born in the Dominican Republic and kind of lived a lot of my life in between the U.S. and the Dominican Republic. But I've been living most of my life here in New York. There's a lot of things that I feel I do have passions for, learning about health and wellness overall. And a lot of social issues as well around the world. And just environmental sustainability is also another big one. I'm curious about every little thing. This is going to be fun. (laughs) Seems Um, you are passionate about everything, passionate about life. What I most get out of you, and we've known each other a little over a year, I think. Yeah. Is that sustainability piece and the health and wellness. I mean, that's also Mm -hmm. along my lines. If you have Mm. healthy thoughts, healthy mind, healthy food, you're much more of a person that you want to share and care Mm. about others. Where were you last week? It seems (laughs) she's, for the listeners, she's glowing. (laughs) Honestly, ever since I came back, I'm wow. My just energy is completely different. (laughs) I just returned from, uh, I think, about five days in Mexico, uh, nearby the coast in Playa del Carmen, the Cancun area. And it was my first time ever just overall in Mexico and just visiting this sort of wellness or holistic wellness hotel that has very good, I don't know, the purpose behind everything. It's pretty incredible. I was very honored to come across them. I, I spent five days over there by myself. Absolutely magical. I keep describing it like it's just magical because the sunsets and, and the sunrise, I didn't know that I was going to experience this, but I was there during the full moon. And to see the full moon just completely lit, light up the entire reflect on the water. These are the things that I, it's so easy for me to fall in love with because it's just so beautiful. I was there for five days and it's been incredible because I got to just be by myself, time away, take care of myself, do some meditation, journaling by the beach, which I feel, I don't know, my heart is always very attracted to just the beach, to be honest. I don't know if it's because I was born in the, on an island, <laughs> but it's always been, it really always calms me. I guess that's why I'm going so much. <laughs> I think this is just amazing Uh, when you think all of us, the listeners and me included, sometimes we forget how much we need that time to yourself Mm -hmm. and not adding more. Living in New York City is, I mean, living in New York City is fun, exhilarating, Mm -hmm. but it's totally stressful. There's a lot of people, there is dirt, there is the good, the bad, and the ugly. I always call it like that. And then you get away and you see the full moon. Oh my God. What is it? What is it that we stay in New York? And what is it that we have to go and leave? I love that that we're talking about this because throughout the entire trip, even I, I think the very first day that I got there, I got there maybe in the afternoon. And the moment that I think the night, it was that same night where the, the full moon started. I started reflecting on the fact that 
a lot of us in New York. And I think part of this is very much an American just lifestyle, but because we live in such a big city, that definitely also plays a part. But we're constantly, we're working just nonstop. It's, it's always running and we always feel we have to be machines. And it's even hard to breathe sometimes, to be honest. Yeah. I find myself kind of gasping for air. And I feel a lot of us tend to kind of, oh my God, I can't wait till I get a break. Or, oh my God, I can't wait to go on vacation. And I think it's very sad to think about because though it's extremely hard for us to kind of train our brain to go into the mindset of just being at peace and ease and also just just complete being in the present I don't think it's impossible and I I think that's why and even being over there and I was talking to one of the workers over there which were absolutely so loving I he had lived in the U.S. for a long time and he was telling me that the reason he moved back to Mexico was because he didn't feel like he was living in the U.S. and you would think we have there's just connotations around people working for example at a hotel or just being waiters but the joy that you see in people when they're just able to also just work and do something they love and at the same time feel they're living it's absolutely incredible and so he was talking to me about that I feel this so much living in New York I, I think New York it's definitely a privilege in many ways but so many people's dreams and I feel very honest to, out of all places my family chose to live here but nevertheless I think it's a very difficult city to learn how to love and navigate and that's why what, being over there the first day I shouldn't have to wait to go on a trip this or away to feel this level of peace and sanity. I don't want this to be the only place where I can access that level of peace. And ever since, and I've been telling this to friends all, ever since I came back, I'm, from now on, what I'm just every day, every second of my life, I'm just gonna go back in my ma- in my mind, go back to where I was in, in Mexico and just, and it's not, sure, the beach, very beautiful. I feel overall, um, it definitely has, I, I guess for me, uh, a huge kind of shift in energy just because it's the water. And I think it really has a lot to do with why the reason that I grew up on an island and I was always at the beach but nevertheless I want to be able to access that level of peace and just being to ground myself at all times rather than feeling overwhelmed and oh I have to get so much done it's such it's so awful and I know I'm not the only one but it's so it's it feels so bad when you just are constantly needing I don't I don't know your to-do list feels like it's never ending and you feel like you have to get it done all at 100% And it's just unrealistic. We have to be able to take care of ourselves and we have to force ourselves because it's very easy to continue working nonstop because we feel once I get this done, then it'll be, it's never going to get done. It's just, everything's hard. There's always things adding up. We have to really. I just um, wanted to ask you, how can you keep this bottle list? Where is that bottle? Or how do you remind yourself of this full moon mm. that you, when you're stressed, yeah. all of us, me included, that we like, <sighs> we take a deep mm-hmm. breath and we, it's not the end of the world. And yeah. sometimes when I do the mindfulness coaching, we do a mm-hmm. body scan yes. and it takes okay. two minutes. We start with the feet and then when we talk about the abdomen mm. and then we always say, be grateful of all the internal organs who do all the yeah. work for us. Mm. And I'm always like, oh, there's other things inside me that are mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. important. Just, yeah. and, and it takes us two minutes. And then when we're so stressed, we cannot take those two minutes. Never. It's so, so hard to. How can you remind yourself mm. or also the listeners yeah. that we need to stay centered probably yeah. and also realistic and make it a ritual to Mm -hmm. take those two minutes. I pride myself in that I've been, thankfully, I've been able to sort of understand more so how to navigate just my overall wellness. I think a a reason, a huge reason being that I was a student athlete in in high school and college that also helped. Nevertheless, over the past few years is when I've really started to, oh no, this It needs to be a priority to have time for myself. It's not, oh, maybe. No, no, no. It has to be. And it takes time to get there because it's a lot of continuing to you try and then you fail and then you're being consistent and then you fall off a bit. It's a, it's, I think it really is about trusting yourself and 
being so committed to just taking care of yourself. For me, I'm at a stage where I'm transitioning yeah, for the past three or so, or, or so months. I've been transitioning to a full-time, which is my first ever full-time. It's been a huge impact on my body overall. Mm-hmm. It's also important to um, listen to your body and, and what it needs and what is asking. When I came back on, on Tuesday night from the trip, I found myself when I was just falling asleep my brain went into kind of, oh my God, it's Tuesday. Tomorrow's going to be Wednesday. Then it's going to be Thursday. Then the next week is going to be Monday and I'm going to start working. And oh my God, and there's still so many things to do. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I really stopped myself. And I'm like, hear me, hear me. The beach, the sun, the, the wind, <laughs> the wind. Just go back into that. And not only that, just I think it's more so the level of gratitude that I felt experiencing those things and those emotions I think very much it, it's a lot of pra- being able to practice when these emotions come up when you feel oh my god you're getting anxious or you're getting overwhelmed you're like, oh this is coming and then you kind of put a stop to it you first obviously need to acknowledge it oh okay this is what's happening and then you're like let's take a deep breath Let's really just think about the fact that the world is not going fi- is, is not, is not going to end you're still going to continue you're human you're not a machine. Yes, the world is moving. It seems to be moving fast because of technology, but you are still human. The, the human body is still the human body. And I think it's important to find that balance between how much can we push ourselves and also how much can we understand how to listen to our body and communicate with it. I've tried for the past months, to be honest, to have this level of just groundedness because I It's been very difficult for me to do it while ever since I started my full time job. Just coming back, I I feel I really sort of had this conversation with myself where Naomi, you have to take care of yourself. It's not, it's nothing, nothing in this world is worth becoming before your well being. It just doesn't make sense because if you are not there, then you can't do anything else. (laughs) I'm really coming into the part where I'm making it a non-negotiable. My morning routine, the time that I spent with myself, this is no matter what happens, it's first thing. And it doesn't, it shouldn't go before anything or anyone. And overall, it's definitely, you have to just, you know, really continue to put it into practice because there's going to be days, of course, that are really low and you fall off a bit and that's just normal because you also have to learn that said to listen to your body but it's really the commitment to always put yourself first that's i think really huge and kind of go back into that level of peace these are very wise words and what comes to my mind is we don't need that much time maybe it's a matter of getting up 5 minutes earlier mm-hmm. just yeah. take those 5 minutes I heard from Trevor Noah, he Mm. starts his day with breathing and he Mm. doesn't say half an hour or an hour. He says the first five minutes, even before he gets up, are the most important. It's breathing and getting some good intentions, some good thoughts for the nice and new day and Mm -hmm. not get too flustered with Ah. what can be overwhelming. And Mm. I know you work in a very stressful environment helping Mm -hmm. others I think it's even more important that you take the time to yourself otherwise how can you give to others Mm -hmm. when you're not a hundred percent I think this is something that I'm coming and I've always sort of known this I'm you we have to take care of ourselves before we want to be of service to others but I think being in the position where I'm really being pulled out in different directions it's completely different because you then feel you want to be able to have 10 arms and 10 legs to kind of help as much as you can or go beyond. The truth is, it's like, I I just go back to we're humans, we're humans. And I think this idea, and and it's very, it's become so common. I think why a lot of people struggle so much with anxiety at work and um, feeling overwhelmed all the time. And just in general, because when you're overwhelmed at work, that transfers to every area of your life because you just can't, you feel like you can't handle anything. I think a huge reason for that is because we feel this immense de- like pressure or demand to move as fast as the machines that we work with. I feel a lot of us do it and the organizations or teams we work with, it comes very subconscious you have to be really highly aware to really put boundaries and ground yourself in understanding that 
it's unrealistic for us to think that we can move and always, I don't know, move incredibly fast at a incredibly, I don't know, unrealistic pace where in fact, we're just, we can do the best that we can and we are doing the best that we can. The world is not going to end if we move at the pace that we are. I mean, we've come so far and I feel a lot of the burnout thing happens because of that. I've just been, I said, working full-time for three months, but I've had friends that have been in full-time jobs for some years and I could just see in their face and just hearing their experience. They're exhausted and just, what's the word? They're just, uh, they feel very done with it all. And I don't think it's so much the work itself. I Because I have to think that a lot of us, Obviously, this is a privilege. A lot of us go into jobs that we find an interest in somehow. There may be things that we don't like to do. I think in everything in life, there's going to be annoying things that we're like, oh, this has to get done. I truly believe most of the time for people, the reason they get burnt out and and feel they've just been exhausted completely and drained is because they're not putting themselves first. And they're they're always giving and giving and giving. And they're not looking inside and kind of figuring out and listening to their body. And that's just what, how, what I've learned so far. Because I'm just, it's been three months and I feel like I'm about to just hit it. Like, <laughs> it's not okay. And I catch myself. I'm, I just, there's moments where I'm, oh my God, I really, I get a really late lunch and I feel I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat later. No, and it's just the things that I'm, no. That should not be happening. <laughs> that should not be happening. Just as something as important as food. For me to think that the any job or anything or I don't know, anyone that I'm I'm with has to come before that. No, nah, that's where I am. I have to be able to find a balance on learning how to take care of myself and be able to at the same time provide the best that I can at whatever job I do. It's, it's important, especially when you're having to to really directly serve people, which is always a lot of, there's a lot of challenges that comes with it. Well, let's go back to the house of Aia and <gasps> hopefully, funny. when are you going back? <laughs> oh my God. I did, I thought five days, was, I mean, five days was okay, but there was so much to explore the different classes that they had, the yoga meditation, they have uh, Tai Chi, I think it's called. Tibetan bowls. You also get to talk with the shaman and just so many different things. And I want to be able to do all of them. Um, when I, if I do go back, I'll probably do longer. Doing it at the end of the year was definitely it. Right before Christmas, sort of just by myself. It's the perfect time because I get to reflect on everything. Obviously, you can reflect at any time, but I think overall, the end of the year, it just it feels good. And also, the weather in Mexico, it's it's, it's perfect timing in December, and it's not as crowded as um, it would be in the summertime, for example. I have to. I'm not sure if this is going to become a tradition of mine. <laughs> maybe next year I'll I'll get back, or maybe the year after that. But I would definitely love to go. Um, if anybody needs a, sort of their own little wellness retreat. The House of Aia in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, is so it is so perfect. <laughs> it really is. Thank you so oh much God. for taking us on the journey to the House of Aia. And of I wish you all the best. And I hope you can bottle that great energy when you have yes. a stressful moment and just smell at that I, bottle. The- yes. I hope we can all allow ourselves to access that piece anywhere. Okay. okay. So thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. What a lovely conversation. Don't we all need some time to ourselves, especially in stressful times? We need even more time alone in silence on the beach with the full moon take it from the iron woman we have episodes every monday every wednesday don't miss out there's something for everybody and more will be coming 